Like SN2 reactions, SN1 reactions involve nucleophilic substitution at an sp3 hybridized carbon. But unlike the SN2 reaction, SN1 substitutions occur by a two-step mechanism. The first step involves just the electrophile, a molecule that contains a good leaving group. This molecule is constantly in motion, and every once in a while that motion gets vigorous enough that the leaving group just leaves. This step forms an unstable carbocation, a trigonal planar carbon with an unfilled octet and an empty p orbital. The carbocation is extremely electrophilic, so any molecule with a shareable pair of electrons can satisfy it, making a new bond to that carbon. The rate law for the SN1 reaction is just rate equals K times the concentration of the electrophile. The nucleophile doesn't influence the rate. Because of this, the nucleophile doesn't matter much in the SN1 reaction. Whether it's weak or strong isn't relevant. As long as it has a pair of electrons it's willing to share, the SN1 reaction can happen. While the nucleophile doesn't matter very much in the SN1 reaction, the electrophile does. It needs to have a very good leaving group. For SN1 reactions, this usually means the leaving group's conjugate acid needs to have a negative pKa, although once in a while SN1 reactions can occur for slightly poorer leaving groups as well, those with conjugate acid pKa's up to about 10 or so. The leaving group is important, but another factor is by far the most important for the SN1 reaction, the stability of the intermediate carbocation. No carbocation is very stable, but there are a few factors that make some carbocations more stable than others. In order for an SN1 reaction to occur, the intermediate carbocation needs to be relatively stable. Otherwise, it's just too difficult to form, and the SN1 reaction doesn't even get started. For reasons that we'll explain in detail in a future video, tertiary, benzylic, or allylic carbocations are by far the most commonly formed. But secondary carbocations can be formed, albeit quite slowly. Primary carbocations are almost never formed, and the methyl carbocation has never been observed on Earth. The final aspect of the SN1 reaction that we'll discuss is its stereochemical outcome. Let's illustrate this with a tertiary chiral alkyl halide reacting with cyanide. When the leaving group just leaves, it leaves behind this carbocation. Because the positively charged carbon atom has just three electron groups, it is trigonal planar, sp2 hybridized, and its LUMO is an empty p orbital, which looks like this. The nucleophile has two choices for where it can attack. Since both lobes of this p orbital are equal in size, the nucleophile has no preference for attack from one side or the other. Half the time it reacts from one face, half the time from the other. The result is that we make a pair of enantiomers in equal quantities. This is called a racemic mixture. It's usually represented by drawing one product and the plus minus sign below it. The SN1 reaction is said to proceed with racemization of stereochemistry at the reactive carbon. As with the SN2 reaction, this stereochemical outcome is only relevant if the leaving group is at a stereocenter.